meeting Ken on Ferrano Ski Resort today. We've had some new snow. It's been a while in Ferrano since there's been new snow. So um, we're making the most of it and catching the lifts for some easy powder turns. I'm ready to rock and roll. <laughs> you're, you're really? Yeah. Keen. yeah. I got here about 10 minutes Keen ago. Keen away. Keen as mustard. Yeah. What's, so what's this one you got today? Oh, uh, Battalion Surfer. Ah. Yeah, deep powder board, so hopefully it's deep. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to know, isn't it? Yeah. We've had so much wind the last few days that, I mean, uh, it's blown a lot. Yeah, so it? it could be wind packed. Yeah, we'll just, or it could we be might epic be surprised. In the gullies, yeah. We might be surprised. <laughs> The uh, top lift to get out the gates is presently getting <laughs> snow removed, so we don't know how long it's going to be before it opens up. Kind of always happens after big storms here. It's the reason why we're on this side is because the gondola is probably not open yet either. Were you looking down from the ropeway? It looked to be a bit of wind effect. Wind effect on that side looks like it's been wind stripped up. So I was just going how. Although I noticed a few clips on there, power looks nice on this side of the banks. Yeah, yeah. But I noticed that part, this side of the banks, look was wind stripped. Like yeah, that right. Bit there, and I'm just yeah. going, why is that a wind more? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Tai skiing there, they often come to Frano Ski Resort to practice their skiing on pretty ancient skis. <laughs> yeah, old school. <laughs> Three pin bindings. You probably don't know what Jietai is, I should explain. It's a self defense force. Japan, under the constitution, isn't allowed to have a military or an army, so they're called the self defense force <laughs> yeah yeah but some of them are pretty good i mean they're skinny skis they got leather boots three pin bindings but it's probably the instructors that rip it up i'd say uh, the person who actually introduced skiing was the austrian i think he was a lieutenant or a captain yeah, right. von von lurch and he was brought in because there was a you know, they were training to invade through Siberia in the Japanese Russian War. And um, they went to Hakoda, which is a mountain at the top of Honshu. And I think, you know, between 200 and 300 people lost their lives. And, and they were just walking around in the snow. They weren't oh, sort okay. of skiing. So if they had skis, then they would have made more distance then? Yeah, well, I mean, that was the reason why they brought in this Austrian... Um, yeah. Yeah, guy to teach the military how to ski and, and yeah. then he was the one who then introduced skiing to Japan. Yeah, Ferrano the trees tend to be a little bit closer together so you, you got to be quite competent with your tree skiing. It's unlike Niseko where it's basically just silver birch that's really well spaced out. There's another type of tree here which is a little bit closer and there's 
saplings as well so it keeps you on your toes. That's a run. Well, it is out the gate time. Yeah, well, <laughs> what to do? We're at the top of our line. There's a few tracks in front of us, but um, looks like it's going to be pretty good. Just got a face shot and then I could only see with one eye. And Nice run for sure. That one, that one. Powderboard, you don't really need to crank your weight on your back leg. Yeah, so yeah, if you're on a regular snowboard, you gotta lean back like 80% on your back foot. Yeah. But with the powderboard, you're more even, it's maybe like 60% on yeah, your back yeah. foot or something like that. And yeah, right. yeah, so it helps, totally helps. Otherwise, Regular snowboard, your nose is just going to start sinking into the powder. Where yeah. the powder board, it just naturally no sticks up. When I first came to Hokkaido, I was, I was on a millimeter at the waist. Oh, yeah, goes, yeah. yeah, so ten centimeters underfoot. Yeah. And guiding this English ski instructor who came on the same width of ski, yeah. but he saw everyone in his second on super fat ski, so he went and uh, rented. I think they were vocals and they were something like 140 at the waist, <laughs> right? And, and he struggled. I mean, he had touring boots and they weren't really meant to set him up with those right. rental bindings with these touring boots, right? Because right. they're rubber sole sort oh, okay. of walking boots as yeah, well, right? Okay. But they said, okay, I think we can get away with it. And um, anyway, I, I would go ahead and he would just basically catch up to me in no time at all because he was on such wide yeah, skis right. and he, was, he had so much speed. That's it, hey, that's why you want counterboards. You just, you need, you get speed with the wider surface area. Yeah, right yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's what I want. Otherwise, if yep. you're going slow, it's no fun for me. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, generally, I'm, my all-round ski is 113 at the waist now. And, um, you know, if it's a big powder day then I'll take out the bigger skis which are one two four at the waist yeah okay yeah, yeah. so um, you know I've gone from I don't know how long I've been here 15 years I started off with 95 at the waist mm. and gradually gone up 100 and then maybe 108 and 113 is kind of good all around like okay, on yeah. on piste it's fine too yeah yeah Snow's coming in for a reset tomorrow. 
<laughs> Hopefully.